Bonjour, ça va? <laughs> You're now tuned into episode 98 of the Bobby Keith podcast, coming into your ears, your eyes. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. If you are listening to this, Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff, rate and review. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And that's how we make this thing grow. But without further ado, of course, I'm sending y'all peace, love, and positivity. Of course, humans, aliens, and other are all welcome to tune into the frequency, to the vibration we emit on this beautiful Monday afternoon. You listening to this on whatever. You might not even believe in the days of the week, but that's cool with me. As you can see from the title and how I started this podcast, got a little French vibe. You know what I'm saying? A little... I'm not sure if that's the correct phrase, but Quebecois is the topic of the conversation today. Of course, we didn't go to France this past weekend. We went to Quebec, Montreal specifically. I think the most hidden, most slept on gem travel destination in the Northeast area of the United States. If you live in the Northeast, I'm talking New England, New York State, like Eastern New York State, maybe you live in the city, shoot, Pennsylvania even, it's not too, too bad. If you're in Western New York, you're probably going to Toronto, but you might as well consider going to Montreal. This is so slept on, it's ridiculous. This was my fourth trip, second time in the summer. Third time I've been with my wife. The first time she got to experience it in the summer. Montreal in the summer holds a very special place in my heart. It is the first place I went by myself. You know what I'm saying? An international trip by myself. First kind of trip anywhere completely by myself. It was shortly after what I call in my life an awakening. To what truly matters to me, the present moment, peace, love, positivity, my own happiness, things like this. After finally taking that into my own hands, I decided spontaneously I wanted to go to Montreal. This I'm 2016. August 2016, I believe, was the time frame. Maybe September, but I believe August, late August. Definitely late August. Regardless, drove up there from Troy, New York. A quick three or four hour drive. Nothing crazy. If you're in the capital region of New York, I highly recommend this. It's not even even up for debate. You got to go to Montreal. I drove up there and just had a little weekend for myself. So it just holds an extremely special place in my heart. You know, exploring the city, being talked to in French. You know what I'm saying? We only drove a couple hours away. It's it's not even a half day of driving. It's just a a little bit of a drive. And then you're somewhere completely different. I don't think we talk about it enough. I don't know another place in the world like this, to be honest, that's not its own country. We look at places like Letoso. Excuse me if I pronounced that incorrectly. Eswatini. You know what I'm saying? Andorra. Monaco, the Vatican, these places are all located within other places, but, you know, they're their own countries. If we talk about Transnistria, Transistrina, excuse me for the mispronunciation there, that's not an official country, but it's on the eastern part of Moldova. It's probably gotten a bit more uh, recognition in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But there's very few places in the world that kind of exist within a country that kind of feel like their own country. And there's a whole word for it, Quebecois, which is the people of Quebec. It's like its own culture. It's its own thing. It's Canada, but it's Quebec. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Canada, but Montreal is kind of its own thing. Now, I haven't been to any other part of Canada, so who am I to say? You know, I haven't experienced the lovely western side of British Columbia, Vancouver, You know, I did a little time in Seattle, and I heard they're kind of similar, but of course, I haven't been, so I can't say. I haven't spent time in the largest city in the country, Toronto. I have no idea. I've heard wonderful things about that part of the country, but 
one thing's for certain, I've been to Montreal now four times and it is special. <laughs> it's so close, but so far, you're really transported to a new place. This is not a trip to a U.S. city. You truly feel somewhere else. I haven't personally been to New Orleans, but this is what a lot of people say about New Orleans. Interestingly enough, another French situation. The French came and settled Montreal and Quebec. I'm not sure if it, the, the true human experience of that whole situation, but I know that they kind of did the Montreal settling and colonization, I believe 16 something or other. I'm not sure what year that happened with New Orleans, but then they became a part of something else, you know? Quebec, Montreal, a part of Canada. I'm not, again, I'm not sure the whole story on that. New Orleans is part of America, the Louisiana Purchase. Not, again, not too sure the whole story on that. But these places, now I can't speak on New Orleans, but again, that's just something I hear. And, you know, even there's a little bit of a different language situation going on down there. But up in Quebec, up in Montreal, it is pure French. <laughs> like, now a lot of people speak English. You know what I'm saying? But I experienced more French this past four days than I experienced Greek while in Greece. I was talking to my wife about this. We spent our honeymoon two weeks in Greece. We didn't hear no Greek. <laughs> Nobody uh, communicated with us in Greek. I felt awful making this realization. I don't even know the word for hello in Greek. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a basic thing you got to do when you travel somewhere is understand. Bonjour. Hola. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Saudi crop. You know what I'm saying? Little things like that. You, you want to learn to at least try to assimilate into the culture in greece we didn't even it was all english from the from the jump and we were staying at airbnbs local within uh very greek communities in some of these areas you know what i'm saying but still english <laughs> wasn't even a question <laughs> but in montreal quebec french <laughs> bonjour and it just Sava keeps going and going. I don't I don't know how to respond. You know what I'm saying? It, it's truly an experience of itself. You are truly transported to. I know it's obvious you are in another country. Like duh, it's it's Canada. But I don't know. Canada's kind of diet USA in some parts, from what I hear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or depending upon full on, however you want to look at it, more freedoms or less freedoms, however you want to look at it. I'm not here to debate that. I'm here to tell you that when you go to Quebec, Montreal, it feels like you are literally somewhere extremely far away. Not a four hour drive from southern New Hampshire, four and a half, probably less than five hours from Boston. You live in Boston, you can take less than a five hour drive, maybe five hours. I don't know what type of traffic you got, but then you're going to be in a whole new place. A lot of people say it feels like Europe. I'd agree. I took a picture of a beautiful street. And you know how Google has this new feature. Nah, excuse me. Not Google. Uh, Apple has this new feature that when you take a picture of something, there's a little info button on the bottom of the picture when you look at it. Now, with plants, you can hit that and it'll tell you what plant it is. But it also does this with landmarks and locations. So I noticed, interestingly enough, a beautiful walking street in old Montreal. The oldest part of the city, we're talking 1600s, walking street, cobblestone, you know what I mean? Real European, felt like I was in Brussels or somewhere like that, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the only places I could draw the experience from, so uh, <laughs> there could be a numerous other countries that it is similar to, but yeah, I mean, also we were in Paris, so it, could, it kind of felt like, it didn't really feel like Paris. All I'm trying to say is, when I took this picture of this street, in old Montreal, snap. Later that day, reviewing the pics I took, I see the little star pops up on that info. That means there's something that Apple wants to tell you about that picture. It knows something. So I'm like, I looked, I'm like, oh, there's no plants. This must be the landmark feature. I hit it. 
it tells me this is Amsterdam. This is a famous walking street in Amsterdam. That's how different Montreal is from anything around. You truly feel as though you're transported to like Western Europe. You know what I'm saying? It is truly a transcontinental experience. <laughs> Shout out to the Lincoln. You know what I think? You know what I'm saying? I think they made a transcontinental car. Anyway, it truly feels like you left the you feels like you went on an eight hour flight. But you drove your own car. <laughs> and I got a Prius, so I mean it wasn't even a tank of gas. <laughs> I'm saying drove from southern New Hampshire to Montreal and didn't have to get gas until the very last day before heading back to New Hampshire. So that's four days. <laughs> Incredible. I can't say enough good things about this place. Let's just get into the trip as a whole. Thank you for tuning in. Again, this is episode 98 of the Bobby Keith Podcast. Shout out to Montreal. Shout out to Quebec. Y'all deserve to throw me a little uh, a little Canadian dollar for this. And that's another thing. Your dollar stretches in Canada. Period. But it feels even different when you're out in uh, Montreal. Because if you've ever been to Europe, which Montreal feels like Europe... If you ever been to Europe, you know that shit is not cheap. It is an expensive travel destination most of the time, depending upon where you are. I mean, for example, Athens was extremely cheap, but that's not quite the city destination that like a Paris is. Paris was expensive. You know, French uh, tourism in general is kind of expensive. The euro is high. I think the dollar did just pass or equal the euro for the first time in a long time this past week or two, but that's a whole nother topic of discussion. One thing for certain though, is your 20, uh, or, uh, let's make it this way. If something costs $20 in Canada, in Montreal, that's really 15 us dollars. So your money is stretching. You know what I'm saying? You see a beautiful, uh, for example, I got, a uh, record of the Broadway show Hair, an original, an original one. You know what I'm saying? The original Broadway performance and all that. Hair, beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Seven fifty. It was nine ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? But that's really only seven fifty US. Your money stretches, fam. Like for real. It's another country. All right. So <laughs> peace, love, and positivity to y'all. Humans, aliens, and other, all are welcome. You know what I'm saying? And that's how Montreal feels as well. Maybe the most inclusive city I've ever had the, uh, had the privilege of experiencing. Extremely non- non-judgmental. People feel free to be who they truly are. Which is beautiful to see. We don't see that a lot in uh, a lot of the cities in the States. You know what I mean? There's a, I mean, you do in certain places probably, but... I don't know. I don't really see people truly expressing themselves to their full potential, at least where I am in southern New Hampshire. I don't really me like just wearing tie dye seems like out of the normal here. You know what I mean? It's very uh buttoned up here. And I like to open my buttons. You know what I'm saying? Little, little taco meat out. But vegan, vegan taco crumbles. You know what I mean? Lentils and all that. But uh, it's it's a truly free experience it feels as though in Montreal uh even before a few years back my first visit 2016 uh weed was not federally legal in Canada but in Montreal it was legal not like legal legal but like the cops didn't give a shit they understood in fact there's a thing every Sunday in Montreal called the Tam Tam which is essentially just like kind of a hippie gathering I went, we smoke going, nobody cares, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't partake because I was going home. <laughs> uh, literally, that was my last stop before <laughs> leaving on that original trip. So, of course, yeah, I didn't partake because I didn't <laughs> particularly think it would be a good idea to have just smoked and then go through an international border. And I suggest y'all follow my advice on that. Don't, don't do that if you're leaving on Sunday. Maybe leave Monday and then partake in the Tam Tam on Sunday, but always just a chill thing cops would be around but not caring like it's a different culture 
that's another thing with the police. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if you live there, you have a different experience, but it didn't feel as though this overarching, overarching kind of overlord, overseer thing that the police feel it like here in the States. Up there, I'm sure if you're a local, you probably experience it. Um, but I didn't feel that there. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like an intimidation thing going on over there, which again, shout out to Montreal. Everything just seems a little friendlier there. I mean, it's a stereotype about Canada, but it, I think it's true. And people have interesting things to say about uh, Quebecois, you know, French Canadian people, lovely people to me. I've never had a one weird thing happen. You know what I'm saying? Incredibly lovely people. And I'm I'm just over the moon with my experience in uh, Montreal. So we can get into the trip. You know what I'm saying? We left. Well, I hear ideas of it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I've been, if y'all been listening to these episodes, I'm actively trying to sell this condo that my mom owned before she passed, right? And uh, obviously it became mine. And there's been all sorts of stuff going on with like sales and will it sell, dates. And basically, we almost weren't able to go because I almost had to be in New Hampshire at the condo on Friday. But it got pushed back to Monday as of today, or like today, last week. So Tall had off uh, Thursday, Friday already, and she had the full weekend off. You know, we're the type of people, if we have a four-day stretch of open time, we're going to take a trip. (laughs) Like, what? How could we not? So, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, I got word that it got pushed back, and I didn't have any commitments for Thursday or Friday. So, Tuesday afternoon, Tal gets home from work, and we get active at planning this trip. Very spontaneous. It's like, where could we go? We could do a Miami thing, Kind of want to leave the country. Iceland, that's kind of expensive. Montreal, Tal had never been in the summer. It had a special place in my heart, so we figured it out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you the rest about this right after a quick break from our sponsor. This week's presenting sponsor of the Bobby Keith podcast is, of course, Mate Libre. A beautiful product from Montreal itself. A Quebec product to the fullest. Now, if you've listened to this show, you understand how much I love Yerba Mate. It is a beautiful tea, I believe indigenous to Northern South America. It could be also found in Central America, but I'm aware of it being a South American product that is essentially a caffeinate, a, <laughs> a caffeinated tea, a caffeine replacement of sorts that makes me personally feel much better than a coffee. Sometimes coffee gets me a little jittery. Sometimes coffee gets me a little anxious. But one thing is for sure, mate libre and all yerba mates in general suit my body well. They give me that alert, you know what I'm saying? But not anxious, alert and energetic feeling that you like from caffeine products, but without the negative side effects. (laughs) I really feel like I'm doing a true ad read. Uh, For full disclosure, I not sponsored by anybody. I just like to highlight certain products or entities that I really enjoy with from week to week in preparation for one day where they do pay me. But hey, Mate Libre, if you see this, I love (laughs) y'all. Send me a case. I would drink it and advertise it as much as possible. What's so good about Mate Libre is compared to its US counterparts, the amount of caffeine in each can is... I believe more approachable, much better, a more suitable option. The thing with the Yerba Mate products here in the States that I find, I like to support a couple brands. Um, I'm sure you all know the yellow bottle, uh, Goyaki. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I've never actually read the actual brand, to be honest with you. And uh, But you know, it's the yellow one. It says organic yerba mate. They don't really highlight their brand name. It's more just a highlight of this is organic yerba mate. And the other brand I like is Clean Cause uh, Yerba Mate as well. Both beautiful organic natural products that are sort of sweetened um, flavored yerba mates. 
the thing about them is they deliver lots of caffeine. I'm talking 150 to 160 milligrams of caffeine per bottle. Now, the bottles are bigger. I believe they're 16 ounces. I'm not sure the the milliliter conversion, but it's probably two of these. Um, These are little 250 milliliter bottles, and they only contain 50 milligrams of caffeine, which I believe is the perfect amount to sustain you throughout the day uh, in little punches, little doses. Instead of taking all 160 milliliters at once, you can drink three of these little uh, 50 ones and you can switch up the flavor each time and do it throughout the day when you need it. Matter of fact, at one point during this trip to Montreal, it may have been 5.36 p.m. I was exhausted. We had done Mount Royal that day. It was very hot. It was probably the hottest day Montreal had seen all year. And after our little afternoon cool down at the Airbnb and coming back out, I was beats and exhausted. I wish I had had one or had had some caffeine to get me going. Now, normally at 5.36 p.m., I would never consume a caffeinated thing because then I would be up all night. But alas, Mate Libre, <laughs> Mate Libre comes to the rescue, right? Beautiful little 50 mil- milligrams of caffeine and it perfectly elevated me enough to not fall asleep, to still enjoy the night and fall asleep at a reasonable hour without any of the extra caffeine problems that come with drinking caffeine late at night. I can't say enough about this brand. I love this brand. I bought six to take home with me. I drank one this morning, and I will be drinking one or two a day for the next few days as much as I need. Um, I recommend the passion flavor and the mint and lime flavor. I also tried the ginger, the original, and I believe a pink one. It might have been grapefruit. All incredible. Can't say enough about Mate Libre. Shout out to Quebec as a whole. Thank you for theoretically, spiritually, energetically sponsoring this week's episode. (laughs) And welcome back to the show. I hope you enjoyed the ad read from this week's presenting sponsor. Mate Libre, shout out to them. Forgot to mention they are certified organic, biologic, as they say in Canada. Incredible product. Can't say enough. As you see, I got my Quebec hat out ready to go, you know what I mean? I didn't get it on this trip. I got it a few trips ago, but, you know, beautiful. You got to love Quebec, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, back to the story. We had found out that we had Thursday through Sunday available, fully free, no obligations. So, of course, we looked into everywhere we could go, and we decided Montreal was the way to run. So we, uh, you know, looked up the requirements. So now Canada is easier to get into than it was a few months ago. It used to be one of the hardest countries to get into in the world, in this COVID uh, world. Even if you were vaccinated, you still had to negative test and possibly quarantine. They lifted all of that. And if you are vaccinated, it is extremely simple to get into. Uh, The only requirement is you use this app called like Arrive Canada or something. Extremely simple, extremely easy to navigate. You essentially upload your passport or travel documentation and your vaccination card. And that's pretty much it. You just say when you're going, the reason for travel, which border you arrive into, uh, which may be the only hassle of the whole situation. Because normally you just plug into Google Maps and whichever route is quicker that day, you can go through. Uh, But of course, in this new COVID world, you kind of have to say, I'm going to go through this border at around this time, which was the only semi annoying part. Um, Because, you know, sometimes if there's traffic, Google Maps will change your route. You know what I mean? And then you can go through a different border, which we found out there are so many different options to go through um, when you really look at it which I never had actually looked at the map of which border are you going to go through. There's a lot of different land border crossing options, but alas, got through the app to the part where it says, where are you staying? So of course that means now we have to decide on a accommodation. Uh, We looked at pretty much every single Airbnb option in the entire city of Montreal um, and expanded our search beyond Montreal into the surrounding towns of Laval and Longueuil. Longueuil? I'm not even sure the pronunciation on the city that we stayed in, but um, we ended up deciding a uh, nice little apartment about a 15 minute 
drive on Google Maps directly to the heart of everything. It just happened to be on the other side of the bridge in a direct uh, suburb. It's still the Montreal metropolitan area. There's some parts of Montreal that are a further drive from where we stayed. We uh, strategically clo- chose a place that was pretty much right next to the main bridge to get into the city. Um, so that was great. We obviously wanted to stay in the city itself, but you know, summertime Montreal is it's it's a major city uh, price tag. There's a few places, some high rise stuff. We had stayed in a high rise before, probably uh, for like I don't know, fifty to seventy dollars a night. The same type of accommodation right now for summertime is like two hundred plus a night. That's the difference of going in the winter and in the summer. Winter in Montreal uh, is incredible for your dollar (laughs) because not a lot of people are traveling there. It's not so much a tourist destination in the winter because it is as much winter as we get in New England. It's a a little bit more (laughs) there, I will say. Uh, It's a little bit more frozen, a little bit more icy. Um, I remember our latest in 2019, we went in February and the back alley to get to where our apartment was was legitimately an ice rink with kind of tire uh what would you call that um indents similar to a car wash where you kind of put your shit in neutral and just hoped for the best um so that's why it's a bit a bit more affordable in the winter uh so we had stayed previously downtown and another time in the hoche laga i think i'm saying that correctly uh area of town like Two very happening parts of the area, and we got there for extremely cheap prices. I'm talking under $100 a night. Um, So this time, of course, it's summer, so the prices are elevated. The one time I went by myself, it was one of the only times I've ever stayed in like a uh, kind of shared Airbnb situation. It's more hostile vibe than anything. It's probably the only time I've ever done that. Um, It's kind of a air mattress in a side bed, shared bathroom all that good stuff but it was of course the only accommodation I could get because I literally went even more spontaneous than this trip I decided uh, I believe the day of that I was gonna go and that was a fun uh, conversation with the border guy like I don't have accommodation I'm gonna figure it out when I get there and that was a good time because it was pretty stressful being in Montreal and for the first time uh, and not having accommodation so this time of course we figured out ahead of time and we couldn't stay downtown. It was a bit expensive, you know what I'm saying? Uh, totals were coming to around like $777 for pretty good accommodation in great parts of the air- town, you know what I mean? Um, so we went with pretty good accommodation a little bit outside of town. The same kind of distance traveled, I'm uh, going to postulized right now because when we stayed in the Huchilaga area again I could be butchering that um everything was about the same drive as it was for when we stayed literally across the river in a different uh community technically but it's still greater Montreal you know what I mean so anyway we settled on that place uh the total came out to like 420 dollars or something like that for the three nights Uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, four days, technically, you know what I mean? And I think that's pretty fair, you know? That's pretty pretty fair with cleaning, with taxes, and everything. Um, And that's essentially two nights in uh, an average hotel in, like, New York. So still a lot better, (laughs) like, price-wise, for three nights in a world-class city. Uh, So anyway, enter that into the app, and now we are good to go. We're scheduled, everything's good, and Thursday comes along, we drive up. Uh, The cool part about the drive from where we are in southern New Hampshire is that you actually go through Vermont, which is a beautiful place that I really haven't spent much time in at all. It's always kind of been a place I've driven through, either southern Vermont to get to upstate New York, where I went to school and lived for quite some time after the fact. Or, you know, this trip to Canada, you drive through the middle of Vermont and you pass Burlington. I've never spent any legitimate time in Burlington, Vermont, and I would love to one day. But 
Um, the trip totals around a little under four and a half hours, uh, which is, again, great. I think it gave us like four hours and 10 minutes or something like that on the GPS, which is perfect. Um, very doable to feel like you dro- you covered a lot of ground, but you still are not exhausted from the drive. Once you hit like that, that seven, eight hour driving day, that's like, yee, that's a lot of driving and you don't really have much time to do anything when you get somewhere. And that's just kind of, you know, that's, it's pretty far. So it's a great distance on the drive. And we stopped in the capital of Vermont, you know what I'm saying? Montpelier, they have a really, really cool uh, co-op. And I got maybe the, I don't know if it was the best, but one of the best three things I ate on the entire trip was at this co-op in Montreal. And it was a Vermont me is what it was called. Uh, it's a play on a bond me with beautiful uh, homemade baguette and incredible homemade kimchi with this incredible tempeh. Uh, and that, uh, everything, you know, it's banh mi, you know what I'm saying? Great sauce. So if you're ever in Montpelier, Vermont, get the Vermont me vegan sandwich. I think it's only made vegan. I don't think they make it another way. Incredible. Anyway, that's not, that's not what you're here for. You're not here for that. You're here for getting to Quebec. Let's, so we head up to the country, uh, the, the border, you know what I'm saying? I choose the lo- the wrong line. <laughs> If you've ever driven through a land border, sometimes you can just choose the the wrong line. The other one moves quicker. Maybe you have uh, somebody from a random like uh, passport situation that makes your line held up a bit more than a simple one. Like if you have a Canada license plate in front of you, either Quebec or Ontario or Alberta or anywhere, that's probably going to be a lot easier in the line than. Uh, and if you only have U.S. people in front of you, etc. cetera. Um, regardless, it was only about a 10, 15 minute wait, but it was the most traffic we experienced on the well, one day in Montreal. We had a little traffic, but pretty much the worst traffic of the whole trip was just at the border getting into Canada. But once we got to the window itself, it was extremely easy process. Handed over the passports. We put the Vax cards in the passports quick uh, little question like are, what are you going for where are you staying how long are you staying have a good trip incredible pull off and it's another hour or so to montreal from the border we got to our airbnb settled in things looked sweet uh, turned on the ac because it was the hottest weekend in montreal it was a certified heat wave but the funny thing about that was is it was just in the 80s and um here in southern new hampshire it's been in the 90s for a couple weeks so it's like it actually was a little cooler but up there it was a certified heat wave for them which was uh it was actually a little bit of a cool off for us which is a nice little treat uh similar thing happened when i went to my bachelor trip in seattle one of the hottest weeks ever recorded there but it's just as hot in southern new hampshire but with more humidity than it is in seattle so i find that fun when like other places are like oh my god this is the hottest it's ever been And I'm over here in New Hampshire like, well, I think it's actually hotter here. And it's funny, that perspective, because to a lot of the country, like New England is a very cold, frigid place, but it's actually hotter than a lot of the places you think about like visiting. Um, So anyway, that being said, we get to the Airbnb and now it's time to find somewhere to eat. You know, happy cow. My wife and I were vegans um, and Montreal is one of the most vegan friendly cities, period. Uh. Everywhere has vegan options, everywhere that we go to, at least. Um, Vegan is understood. Public parks have vegan options. It's like in stuff that you would never like the equivalent of a hot dog cart in New York City. will have a vegan option in Montreal, which is just like wild to me because that's just not the case in the States, at least where I live in New England, New York area. Um, That's just not quite the case. And the amount of green and uh green if you're familiar with happy cow green dots mean it's a vegan restaurant and there was i wouldn't be surprised if there was a hundred vegan restaurants and uh vegan establishments like grocery stores ice cream places um barber there's a vegan barber shop you know what i mean they had everything so incredibly vegan friendly city Uh, We found a place, it was called like Burger Fiance. Um, It was in the old city of Montreal, which is a place neither uh, Talia, my wife, or I had experienced uh, yet. 
and it's actually the oldest part of the city. It's what I was talking about earlier that actually looks like you're in Europe. Like, there's no question about it. Like, uh, Apple th- thought that that picture wasn't taken in Amsterdam. So that was a really cool experience. We had a great dinner um, and we had our first run in with somewhat of a Montreal delicacy, kimchi fries. Kimchi seemed to be a large theme of this trip. I told you about the kimchi, kimchi, ah, kimchi sandwich I had uh, on the ride up. On this menu, we saw kimchi fries. Like, what? We have to try this. Why? I've never seen this in my life. And uh, sure enough, extremely delicious. Like, top-notch deliciousness. And shout out to this place, Burger Fiance. We tried a couple of their burger sandwiches. Um, I got, like, a, a play on, like, a spicy chicken sandwich. And she got a play on, like, a classic bacon cheeseburger. And both very good. Um, brownie a la mode to finish it off. Just deliciousness. And we walked around the old old part of Montreal. It was truly like felt like we were walking to Europe. <laughs> it was really fun. Um, took in all the local sites, you know, walked down to the riverfront, the St. Lawrence River. The reason Montreal exists is how important that river is for the trade of, you know, getting to the Great Lakes area from the Atlantic Ocean. It's kind of a gateway into the central part of North America crucial crucial waterway as far as geologically concerns uh are concerned (laughs) um and we walked down to the river they had a Cirque du Soleil festival going on they had all sorts of uh kind of carnival style situations uh there was a huge ferris wheel um doing its thing we just had a great time walking around Ended up ordering uh, Tate. We walked around for a couple hours. Probably, I think we got in like five miles of walking or something. And that's another thing. How walkable the city is. Um, Compared to most American cities, excluding like the New York. Because New York is extremely walkable. Can't hold you on that. Um, Some parts of Boston, yes. But not every part. Montreal is like so walkable it's not even funny like they closed down main thoroughfares just so you can walk in them um the walking street it's one of my favorite parts of europe uh it's just having a street that you can just walk on it's not meant for anything but walking you you walk there all the restaurants are there your grocery stores are there there shouldn't be cars there you know what i mean you can park a couple blocks away but everything you need will be within walking distance because if you think about a city if you're living five stories up you don't want to have to go very far to do stuff um so anyway walking streets all around old montreal no cars and just awesome um we did a bunch of walking and there was a vegan sushi place that i placed in a online order for takeout it was kind of a sampler platter situation and brought that back to the airbnb oh parking um So we drove from our Airbnb to downtown, which again was only like 15, 18 minutes or something like that. Very, very quick to get there. And uh, finding parking, uh, I was kind of terrified about because, you know, if you go into Boston or New York or anything like this, parking downtown is like, wow, that'll really offset your your dollar. You know what I mean? That's that's going to cost you like 40 bucks just to, you know, go downtown and park at least 20. Right. So we get to this garage and it was nine Canadian dollars. So we're talking like five US dollars for, I I think it was a deal after 5 p.m. And I'm talking a downtown garage, like the equivalent of parking in downtown New York or the equivalent of parking uh, by the TD Garden in Boston. Like this type of equivalency, like North End Boston parking garage five dollars for the entire night incredible it blew my mind when we got back to the car like you pay when you get back to the parking lot you go into the machine we were expecting extraordinary prices this was like uh less expensive than parking in manchester new hampshire like what is happening here you know what i'm saying that's such a plus and we found that throughout our journey that parking was extremely affordable and i'm not sure what that is directly influenced by but hey it's incredible and there was no toll for the bridge (laughs) like a main bridge not having a toll it's just that type of stuff is awesome i love that about uh well i don't know if it's canadian wide i don't know if parking is extremely cheap in toronto as well but certainly with montreal and quebec is 
very affordable to bring your car. So I would definitely suggest driving if you have that option and or renting a car when you land. If you fly in, um, definitely, definitely use a car because the expenses that come with having a car are just not that high there. We may have spent throughout four days parking all over various popular parts of the city. We may have spent $40 total on parking. You know, $5 here, $3 here, um, $8 somewhere. You know what I mean? Actually, I don't even know if we passed $25 in complete honesty. We, I don't think we had spent more than maybe not even $20 US in parking. For parking in hot spots of a major city, you just don't see that in the US. I can't speak on other parts of the world because I have no idea, but um, at least for the compared to the US, this is like otherworldly. <laughs> so definitely, definitely bring a car if you can. If you live in New England, drive there, New York, drive, because you are not going to spend as much as you think you are on like things like parking. So anyway, the sushi was incredible. Um, Came with like a miso soup and some gyoza and really, really good chopsticks, which I like, I don't know, I kind of have a pet peeve about like if you get takeout like sushi or um, some noodle dish, like a ramen takeout and you get chopsticks, sometimes they're so bad quality wise that it's like not even worth it. These were such good quality and the place was called Bloom Sushi and it was really good. Can't recommend it enough. Um, So the next morning, uh... You know, I wake up, do my meditation, my yoga, get it out the way early in the morning. Uh, we get ready for the day and we're trying to figure out what to do. You know, I've heard incredible things about the Montreal Bagels. Um, and they're kind of world renowned to be some of the best in the world. Wanted to try them, of course. Um, hadn't yet. Uh, they contained honey, as far as I was aware. So that's probably why we hadn't tried them before. Um, but at this point, we're not like against honey if it's in it we'll probably try it we don't like own honey but like you know what i'm saying it's one of those weird vegan things it's like you're either for it or against it um but anything to keep more bees around in my opinion is a good thing because they're kind of fueling everything (laughs) uh so we went to try this bagel spot we parked in this really cool area of the city called mile end again it was like three dollar parking for like three hours and uh Friday morning you know what I mean like Friday 11 a.m type vibe like three dollar parking incredible um anyway we walked to this place St. Vieter and it's like their most famous bagel spot they only take cash we don't have any Canadian cash they have an ATM we do it then I look in it's like oh there's eggs they're like you see all the ingredients and then go on their website as we're waiting in line they have eggs in the bagel so it's like ah all right um it wasn't meant to be. Might as well not uh, eat these. So we obviously didn't. Because um, that's a vegan line that's beyond. Uh, and they even answer on their website, like, do you have any vegan products? And they're like, our whole wheat bagel doesn't have eggs, but it's used in the same mixer as our other ones. So it's not vegan because there's egg residue. And like, how cool is that? <laughs> and nothing about the honey um, situation, which was like uh, another interesting thing. Anyway, um, So we don't get the bagels, but we find a vegan spot a couple blocks away. We go there, a little coffee, a little pastry, um, pretty good. And I think that place was called Lou and I. Uh, Recommend that for some coffee. It was a good vibe. Um, It was gluten-free, and I don't think we knew it was going to be (laughs) gluten-free. We're not, like, trying to be, like, gluten-free or whatever. So it was uh, a little disappointing on the dessert side because we were like, oh, let's get some croissant or uh, pastry side, I mean. Patisserie. Um... So then we find out it's another like 10, 15 minute walk to one of the greatest restaurants, period. It's called Ox Vivers, Ad Rivers, A Vivers. <laughs> Again, my French is not great, but it was opening at 11. We walked over there, open. Um, one of the greatest meals of the whole trip. I got a bacon Caesar salad, which was like just otherworldly with their homemade tempeh. It was like, wow, incredible. And Tall got a lox wrap. Um, Kind of like a lox bagel, but it was within a, a wrap on their homemade chapati. I can't recommend that place enough. If you go to Happy Cow and you like filter by most reviews and highest reviews, it's number one every time. Um, Ox Vivers, in my English pronunciation of the French words, incredible restaurant. Can't recommend it enough. Um, 
after that we headed back to the car because the you know the meter was going to expire and uh stopped at a little thrift shop and had a really great interaction with a like a vintage it wasn't a thrift shop per se it was more of a vintage shop you know like curated thrift essentially is the difference between the two um it's like if you go to enough thrift shops and you find enough cool pieces it becomes a vintage shop <laughs> it's funny how that works right because you can't call it a vintage sh- you can't call goodwill a vintage shop but if you go to goodwill every day and you accumulate enough items it's now a vintage shop anyway uh we go in and we were laughing about something i forget what but the guy working uh was like oh are you talking about this uh song and I'm like, oh no no we were talking about something else but this song is great he was playing uh get it shoddy get it shot get 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 it shot incredible song oh and we just started vibing out with the the employee he was a really cool guy really chill guy and i wish like fashion and streetwear and music conversations went like they did with this guy here in the states because it was just like it was no i don't know at least i found in the states it's a lot of uh oh you're not up on that it's kind of like a superiority thing to like know more but it was more of just like a sharing um because he was like wondering about the shoes he's like those are the jaden smith joints yeah uh, he reminded me of uh, what's my man's name uh, in the in London that does the oh, what's my man's name with the tall polo shirt. If you're a hip hop fan, you know who I'm talking about. Like if you go and do a freestyle in London, it's with this guy. Oh, I forget his name. But uh, anyway, he reminded me of like a younger version of that guy <laughs> uh, from Montreal with a different accent, obviously, but uh you know chill and tall found a dress and we just had a good conversation it was talking about shoes and talking about having favorite jordans and having to sell shoes to buy stuff and like how shoes aren't really important it's more about living and i don't know just all sorts of stuff he rem- he reminded me a lot of a younger version of myself and he was 23 years old so it makes sense and he was uh he was talking about i'm really into 2000s new orleans now man <laughs> he was talking about uh <laughs> getting into like Lil Wayne and uh, Cash Money Records and shit like that. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, man. Good for you. It's good stuff right there. Uh, so that was a good vibe. Went back to the car and then we were pretty close to Mont Royal, which is this really cool mountain in the middle of the city. Now, Montreal directly translates to Mont Royal, which is this little mountain, um, technically, in the middle of the city. It's more of like a big hill. Um but it is a mountain. It is, you definitely do have to climb to get to the top. But we were pretty close to there. So we took like a five to less than five or five to ten minute, like an eight minute car drive. Those details aren't important. But you know how my brain works. I got to flush out all the details. Um, a quick little drive to a neighborhood near the mountain itself um, and found some free street parking which again, (laughs) where do you find that? Uh, Next to the main tourist attraction, free street parking. And we just started wandering into the mountain. There's like hundreds of trails, no joke, um, that lead you up the mountain all to this kind of one lookout place. Uh, I was trying to remember which way I went when I went by myself in 2016. Of course, we didn't go up uh, in the winter because it would be a bit more challenging. Um, and Tal's not much of a hiker, to be honest with you. So it's not like she has micro spikes on standby to walk up trails in the ice. Um, and we started kind of making our way. And then we made it to a viewpoint. And it was, again, maybe the hottest day of the year. Uh, and it was like, we've, we made our way up some hills to get to a point. And Tal's like, what did you get me into? It was kind of, I felt kind of bad at the moment because I was like, uh, I'm sorry. I We're close, though. I know we're close because I know it wasn't a serious hike. I remember just walking up a bunch of stairs to get up. Now, that was a different way. That was one of the ways to get up. I believe it's like 400 stairs directly up um, if you park kind of in the front of the area where the Tam Tam that I was talking about earlier takes place um, every Sunday morning at noon. This beautiful gathering happens at the base of Mont Real at this monument. Um, anyway, we parked kind of randomly off to the side somewhere else and kind of made our way up the side of the mountain. We got to this one viewpoint and I'm like, this is not the viewpoint. So then I started Googling and actually getting a real answer, uh, plugged it into Google Maps and it was only like another 15 minute walk to the viewpoint I knew. 
and we made our way up there um tall begrudgingly <laughs> made her way with me and we got there and it was all worth it obviously because uh not only is there like the incredible view there's also like a legitimate uh visitor center that has like uh full on bathrooms um there was ice pop vendors and stuff like fully aware of vegan i remember uh there was like these fruit pops that everybody kind of had and Tall asked the uh, the lady selling them, like, uh, did they have any dairy? And she's like, nope, they're fully vegan. It's like that type of stuff. That In America, you might ask that question um, and say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, what? How are you not aware of that? Um, they also sold the Mate Libres at the little stand, so I got me one of those. There was also a full-blown cafe. Got a little latte, you know what I'm saying? Got my little cold caffeine fixes. Beautiful to just have at this incredible viewpoint and we kind of soaked in the views now something really funny happened um i went to uh we were just kind of ended up hanging out uh at the top of the mountain for like a half hour or so and long had drank that uh mate libre and i'm like i just want to let's try the latte at the top um at the at, at this little you know little cafe situation at the top of the mountain there's legitimately a vegan sandwich on the menu which is like you just don't see that anywhere a vegan sandwich on the menu so anyway i'm waiting for my latte i, I come back and uh i noticed tall texted me someone t- <laughs> this girl took my spot like they had these chairs uh lined out very far spaced apart by the way like uh, in little groups of three um me and her were sitting in two of them um, just enjoying the view. I got up and thing. So there's three chairs. Charles in the one on the far right, um, facing the view essentially. And uh, I was sitting in the middle one, obviously. And <laughs> some girl came in, sat in the one in the middle, directly next to Tall. Tall had her shoes off, uh, kind of stretching out her feet. This girl takes her shoes off, takes her socks off, airs out her feet, <laughs> doesn't say a word to Tall. And they're just, you know, two girlies just sitting at the top, shoes off, not saying a word, but just kind of uh, experiencing it together. Now I come back, <laughs> and I walk up to Tall and uh, <laughs> like, uh, this latte is pretty good. Do you want some? And she's like, no, but I want another pop. We're trying to like not be rude and say like, uh, can you get out of that seat? <laughs> And uh, Tall's like, yeah, give me another one of those ice pops. So I walk out to the other stand. I get the another one of the ice pops and I come back and uh, I give it to her. And then I just sit down on the far left seat. So this girl's just sitting in the middle. She had her socks on the armrest. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry about that. And then she's like, "Are you? do you, do you two want me to switch? And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> so this random girl is just sitting in between us and we're just vibing. Nobody's saying any words if tall and i need to communicate with each other it's like over text or something and it's just it was so funny um eventually uh i think tall went to the, i forget what happened uh she might have gone to the bathroom or i i forget but the girl did switch sheets at one point um and then uh we just laughed about it and then we went on with our day we went back down to the car and i think we went back to the apartment yeah we definitely did um Oh, no, we stopped at Sophie Sucre, which is probably definitely in North America, the best vegan bakery going. Um, There was one in France that I think takes the cake, obviously. But uh, as far as being in North America, this vegan French style bakery out of this world is called Sophie Sucre. Croissants, chocolate croissants, almond almond croissants. spinach and feta croissant oh man pastries cookies oh it's the best it's the absolute best i got a lavender lemonade it was so good and the vibes in there are just obviously perfect um as you would expect that on a vegan bakery but again this is on the main drag it's called saint laurent boulevard like mick jenkins said i ain't talking eve saint laurent but i've been on saint laurent like a motherfucker um main drag everything's on this street saint laurent and saint Denis, a couple blocks away main drag again parking parked right on the street this is like finding a spot on houston street you know what i mean or fifth ave or boylston street and if we're talking boston you know what i'm saying mass ave like finding a spot right there There there's so many spots available and 
the kicker is it was like again like three dollars for a couple hours oh well i don't even i don't think i only bought an hour and i think that hour was like a, a dollar for u.s money which is like just mind-blowing um on newberry street in boston that same spot is literally costing you like twelve dollars for one hour it's just crazy um so anyway we walk up we walk up and down the street a little bit um have a good time drink the lemonade eat some pastries head back to the apartment and now it's late we get cleaned up etc take a little a little breather it's all took a nap i believe and then uh it was like seven and now it's like what are we gonna do for dinner i'm looking up there's a a vegan ramen spot in uh in the city and it's like you need reservations i set reservations they make everything by hand they have like a tasting menu vibe it seems like super legit so we get a little reservation for 9 p.m which is like very late <laughs> but it was it was pretty awesome and we made our way over there um had some really really great dishes uh there was this cold eggplant dish which was just incredible um I, the shishito peppers i got the shishito peppers with the yuzu uh this beautiful sea salt it was so good um we also got goyoza which were so good and then the main event of course is ramen now i've been making ramen a lot lately i've been i talked about it on the show i think uh my newfound obsession mainly credited to uh, my good friend logan in houston he took us out to a ramen spot and ever since that moment my life's been how can i make the best ramen um and this place they hand make their noodles it's a game changer it's an absolute these are the best noodles i've ever had in my entire life like it was so good um the noodle itself was one of the best things i had uh definitely eaten on the trip uh definitely top three bite of the whole trip um and the ramen itself was phenomenal as well but uh those noodles are special. That's like the key. They hand make these ramen noodles and it shows. They're so good. I can't recommend this place enough. It's called Umami. Uh, Umami uh, something ramen bar or something or other like that. This place, they only had a French menu. They didn't have an English menu. Um, and they didn't really speak much English at all either. So this was like truly like a real travel experience. You know what I mean? Like it was... Uh, I remember Tall had this genius genius moment because Google Translate I'd been using throughout the week uh, for like street signs for parking and things of this nature. They have a great feature where if you open uh, your camera, it'll live translate like words, which is like genius that this exists right now. Um, and I'm sure you're aware of the functionality where you can just press the microphone button. It'll hear a con like a conversation in French and then it'll translate it back for you and vice versa the picture thing came in and like tall had a genius moment she was just like oh let's use your app for the menu because we couldn't figure it out <laughs> and uh so took a picture of or took yeah took a screenshot of the menu because again it was only qr code as well um for covid stuff um and which by the way i'm not a huge fan of i like the physical menu this was the only place that didn't have the physical menu um and i know some people might like it for the minimalism but there's something about the physical menu which i love i don't like having to be on my phone uh especially at like a sit-down dinner for me that a sit-down dinner is all about being present that's like what it's all about and you want to experience your company you want to experience the food with full presence that's why you know that's why it's different than being at home there's no um there's no like possible tv distraction or anything like that so to be out and then the menus on your phone it just it's i don't know it's, it kind of takes away from what i love about eating out you know what i mean i love that presence so like the physical menu adds to that because it's like you have this thing in your hands it's tangible it's it's a real thing. I think um, a lot of us feel this with a lot of stuff as we see records coming back extremely heavy. Um, but anyway, go to that place. Incredible noodles. And Tal was a genius for, you know, she's like, you, let's use that translation thing. So we figured out everything on the menu. Uh, it translated it for us, obviously, with screenshots. And it was sweet. <laughs> Gotta love Google Translate app. Get it if you don't. It's If you have an iPhone, you know how your bottom has like four... You could put four apps there. 
you know, I have uh, I have my phone call, I have text messages, I have music, and the other one is Google Translate. It's so useful for me that I literally have it in my top four app thing. Um, so yeah, the, obviously that was the end of the night. It was super late. Next morning, uh, we want to do the botanical gardens because this is like, for me, that first trip, I spent like six, eight, six to eight hours at the botanical gardens because I had just figured out what it meant to be present and what a better place to do that than at botanical gardens and Montreal's is like some of the best if not the best I've ever been to um yeah the only other one that's kind of even on par I went to the Atlanta botanical gardens and those are really nice but I think the Montreal one takes the cake I think it's uh just such a good such a good one and they have so much like food I love that. I love seeing. I've never I'd like, you know, you you real you eat this stuff every day like onions and cabbage and uh peppers, you know what I mean? But to see them growing, it's phenomenal. And they have of course all these exotic plants that you don't get. There's like a Japanese tree that looks like these pink like uh fluffy balls, like orbs and incredible. They have a whole Japanese exhibit and uh, a Chinese exhibit. Uh, they have a native exhibit. Uh, First Nations uh, is what they call the Native people of Canada, a whole exhibit of what uh, agriculture was back in that time. It's so good. It's such a good one. And then, of course, they have all the, uh, uh, what do you call it, when it's contained in a build, uh, the word's not coming to mind, but greenhouse, all the greenhouse exhibits. So it's like it takes you to uh, rainforest climate, um, desert climate, all this stuff. It's so good. And there's an insectarium, which I went to in 2016, not on this trip, but it's fascinating as well, of course. Um, and there's a biodome, which Tal and I went to in the winter, which is all about the uh, environment itself and like the atmosphere and uh, our, our like what we're doing to it. It's, it. They're just fascinating. And they have a day pe- or a, uh, I'm not sure if it's a one day pass or a weekend pass, but they have a thing where you can get into like all of the exhibits for a fair price. And again, to get into this botanical garden, like a top exhibit uh, attraction for the whole city, it was 22 Canadian a person. So we're looking at like 30, 30 odd dollars for two tickets to like one of the premier things in the city. And we had a great time there, obviously. Um, The, food option there is fully vegetarian with a ton of vegan options like you know how at like attractions recently tall and i uh when we visited houston we went to the nasa uh facility and they had a uh like a food court vibe there was not we struggled so hard with there was no vegan option the one vegan option tall purchased it opened it up it wasn't vegan (laughs) like they labeled it vegan it wasn't vegan like and then for the Montreal Botanical Garden to only have vegetarian food and to have half of the items be clearly labeled vegan and fully vegan. We didn't eat there, but I got two mate libres, baby, because I love that stuff. Um, and yeah, I just can't recommend it enough. If you're ever in Montreal, the Botanical Garden is like world class, like a top visit thing to do. After that, we went and got some ice cream at like one of the most innovative ice cream places I've ever seen. Um, They have, again, obviously we're vegan, but they had both and they had separate machines for everything. It was called Icono Ice, I think. Um, I got a kombucha float, like ice kombucha, like slushy style kombucha with uh, like this incredible passion fruit, uh, something other combination ice cream soft serve on top of it. It was just mind blowing. And Tal had this like kind of like a frozen... uh, the drumstick treat but again of course it was like homemade uh waffle cone with this incredible vanilla soft serve with like a peanut butter core and this chocolate shell with peanut it's so good it was so so good um and again all vegan and like their menu wasn't like a ton of options and then like one vegan option it was like every single option had a vegan alternative and it wasn't an upcharge or maybe one or two of them had an upcharge but like again so vegan friendly and this wasn't even a vegan place it just happened to have all vegan options so shout out to that place and that was a cool neighborhood too that was like uh near where we had ramen which we didn't really spend much time in that area and we 
we saw a lot of the city, but still we barely scratched the surface. There's a few markets that I wanted to check out that we didn't have a chance to get to. Um, other parts of the city, like the West End, I have no idea what goes on over there. Got to check that out. Um, the North End, barely saw any of that. Um, some of the college areas. It's, it's just there's so much to the city to explore and it's so close and it's so fun. Um, so, yeah, after that, uh, I think we went on St. Laurent, had a bit of a stroll, had a good time. Uh, some pastries, I think. Uh, yeah. And then. Uh, we had a poutine at this incredible kind of uh, hole-in-the-wall American-style spot, but they did a poutine, which was delicious. Um, I got some socks at a cool little streetwear brand, uh, two pairs of socks. I almost got a bucket hat and a pair of shorts, but they kind of were blatantly ripping off Golf Le Fleur, like uh, Tyler, Cre- Tyler, the creator's brand um, called Golf Le Fleur. You know how he has golf length? Well, maybe you don't, but... He's been making clothes for a long time under golf, golf lang, um, just like, well, it's, it's a whole thing. Kind of have to know Tyler for his whole experience to understand that. Um, and shout out to, uh, shout out to early Tyler. I remember showing that to my guy, Connor Whalen in high school. And he's like, what the fuck is this? Been hooked ever since, obviously. Cause I, if I showed it to somebody, that means I was already hooked, but shout out Tyler. Um, so I didn't really want to get the stuff that was like kind of blatantly copying his floor design, but they could have collaborated because I really have no idea. Um, I didn't really do the research to this story. It was called Le Cartel. Uh, but it kind of just, it looks exactly like Golf Le Fleur. And I know Golf Le Fleur is not the first brand to put a flower type thing, but it looked exactly like it. And again, I don't know. They could have got Tyler's thumbs up or Tyler could have helped or maybe Cartel did it first and Tyler copied them. I have no idea, but it just didn't sit right in my spirit at the moment to get the uh, the bucket hat and shorts, which were super cool. Uh, and I really liked and I normally would have bought, but it just kind of looked like it was directly to, you know, kind of how like Obey is kind of like Supreme in a sense. Uh, it's kind of it kind of felt like that. Anyway, that was a real inside streetwear conversation that you kind of really would have to be plugged in to understand. So I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> and what else did we do that night? Uh, we went back to Ox Vivers, had a little meal, and I think called it a night. Next morning, we what did we do for breakfast? Um, so we checked out. We packed up our little Airbnb. Great time at the Airbnb. I uh, love a a nice, well-lit, airy, tons of hardwood floor space. I did yoga every day. Um, beautiful. I brought my mat. Loved it. Uh, cool neighborhood. There was a basketball court like four minutes away. Um, did not play, but drove by, and there was always pickup happening, which felt great. Um, I would have done it if I had more free time. Just really didn't. Just kind of passed it on the way to buy water uh, at a supermarket a few times. Um what else more to say? I'm not too sure. We went to Sophie Sucre again uh, that morning. Uh, oh, the previous night we explored a little more, just kind of walked around more walking streets and just had a good time. And oh, so the next morning, the last morning, yesterday morning, we had uh, brunch at this spot called Love and L-O-V. It stands for Local Organic Vegan. There's like three or four locations in the Montreal area. And it was maybe the best uh full experience the best one uh of all it was incredible beautiful beautiful restaurant downtown uh again free street parking um found it downtown crazy uh it was sunday uh so that had something to do with it they only charge for street parking on sunday from 1 to 7 uh 1 p.m to 7 so like most of the day it's free street parking again where do you find that in any major city even on sunday um so boom uh free street parking and on the walk to the restaurant a couple blocks it was like Louis Vuitton uh Balenciaga Hermes you know it was like a really nice part of town so this restaurant obviously matched that energy beautiful restaurant best coffee I believe uh well that morning at Sophie Sucre I had an incredible latte too it was called like the French vanilla dream or something French vanilla fantasy and that was an incredible latte so tasty um and we loaded up on croissants uh to bring home obviously we still have a bunch to work our way through throughout the week uh, 
who am I kidding? They'll be gone in the next day, probably. <laughs> it's so delicious. Um, but yeah, local organic vegan love. Can't recommend that place enough. Again, kimchi fries. The return of the kimchi fry. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, super tasty. Tal had a, a tofu benedict, like an egg benedict style thing. And it was so good. I had a bite of it. And it was like one of the best bites of the trip. Delicious. Um I had like a burger situation with the kimchi fries and a salad. It was so delicious. Um, again, like homemade local organic ingredients, incredible fresh, fresh veggies all over it. It was so tasty. And uh, yeah, I just can't say enough about the Montreal experience. We went to the uh, ice cream place one more time, the Okano ice. Oh, and the night before we went to... Uh, we did a lot that night before, so I'm like missing some of the stuff. But the night before, we went to a vegan ice cream place called Swirl, and that was incredible. Um, like real low key, like uh, owner operator like switches the flavor up as a ton, and it was just kind of like whatever ingredients they can find, they make that day. I had like a a vanilla with yuzu citrus. Yuzu citrus was all over uh, our experience here. It must be ripe this week because like. It was on a few menus uh, that like obviously changed by the week um, because a lot of people are using fresh ingredients there. I love that. And yeah, um, just really good ice cream, really good vibes. Uh, We overheard someone's first date, which was hilarious as like an old married couple at this point to like overhear somebody on a first date. It was just like we were just laughing our asses off at the situation. And then some like... uh, odd individual came over and was like uh to the counter we were just sitting outside it's like a order from the window like you never enter a store you just kind of order from the block and uh we were just sitting and people watching eavesdropping some guy pulled up in like an m4 he came to the four-way intersection uh, missed the shop made like a scene reversed in the middle of the street parked over on the on the side street gets out of his car wearing like super expensive dunks and like a very expensive outfit but like a mask and then he was in a convertible and then i I don't know it's just very interesting very odd stuff and then he walks up to the counter with the mask off so he like has the mask he like had the mask on crossing the street but then took it off when he got to the counter very interesting and uh with canada or at least montreal right now nobody's wearing masks so it was like very odd to see um, because if you're there, I think you're pretty much vaccinated no matter what, um, if you're a tourist or uh, living there. So it, it's not really a concern. Uh, we saw very few masks. So this guy wearing a mask was very odd. And uh, he walked up to the thing and he's like, uh, let me get a squirrel. <laughs> and there's like five different things on the menu. So like, it means nothing. She's like, which one? And he's like, uh, I don't know, whatever you got. And she's like pointed to the menu. And he's like, uh, vanilla Yuzi, uh, mango, cho- chocolate mango. I, I don't know. Whatever you, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want to give me. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> the me- it's one of the smallest menus in the whole city. It's like five options. You can get vanilla. You can get the yuzu. You can get them twisted. You can get chocolate. You can get mango. You can get them twisted. So I guess six items. Um, in total. Period. <laughs> That's the only option. And you can get it in a cone or a cup. It's like one of the most straightforward things ever. It's like, uh, we'll have two number threes. That's literally how we ordered. It was so simple, so easy. Um, and this guy's he's going, he's doing his thing. And then uh, he's like, whatever. And then he's like, is there any way to not get the cone? Mind you, this is like a handmade artisanal waffle cone. It's like incredible. It was one of the most delicious cones ever. He's like, I, I never eat the cone. I just suck it up and then throw it out. <laughs> what the fuck is happening what are we witnessing right now it was so odd and so funny and uh, i just love that uh people watching aspect of things oh man it was so fun um but yeah i just couldn't can't say enough good things about montreal can't say enough good things about quebec go visit if you have a chance um yeah that's, that's about all i gotta say it's an incredible trip can't wait to go back again uh thank you mate libre for spiritually and energetically sponsoring this episode i hope y'all enjoyed this has of course been episode 98 of the bobby keith podcast sending y'all peace love and positivity can't wait to go on another trip it's my favorite thing to do 
and uh, talk to y'all next week. Humans, aliens, other. This has been a great time. Peace.